Good morning. Welcome to Optimal Frequency. I'm Grant. Talk to spirits here at my house using artificial intelligence and white noise. It's a whole shebang, baby. Today I want to do an article or a session on news of the weird. And I wanted to start off with a story that's close to home. So a lot of you know that uh, my brother Gary, I used to do paranormal stuff, throw the odd video up on his channel. I guess he got tired of it, said, hey, dude, go start your own channel. So I did. But uh, this is something he told me about. This is someone that we know. It's from this area uh, and made pretty big news uh, throughout the world. I don't know if Gary covered this on his channel or not. I uh, haven't seen all of his videos recently. Uh, but anyways, someone that we know went to uh, this donation center in North Bay, which is the city that Gary lives in and the one that Robin and I are moving back to. And uh, it's here in Northern Ontario, Canada. And uh, this friend of Gary's and acquaintance said, uh, you know, I like this painting that's here. It's five bucks. And him and Gary were laughing, apparently, uh, because the name on the painting was David Bowie. And uh, they said, yeah, David Bowie. Yeah, like he did paintings, right? Well, David Bowie did paintings, obviously. They were called faces, I think, or heads. Anyways, <laughs> this painting, the, the person we know, the gentleman, bought the painting for five bucks from the donation center, put it on auction, and it sold for $108,000. So kudos to him for having the eye to catch that and uh, make a few bucks. Now, the weird thing that I think about that is people have been posting comments on online saying, oh, this guy, he got a, you know, for five bucks, he should be donating something back to the community. Da, da, da. I personally don't feel that way. If you go in, you spot a treasure and you know, hey, that's worth a few bucks and you make a few bucks on it or even a lot of bucks on it, good on you, man. Uh, you don't owe the community anything. Somebody donated that to a donation center. You bought it fair and square. You owned it. So I was searching news of the weird today to pick my uh, articles that I want to look into. I came across one article. It's on OD.com, so I'm going to give them credit because I'm uh, going to cover their article. They've listed, uh, they call it the four worst professional blunders throughout history. I don't know if they're the four worst blunders. They're pretty big, but uh, I think there's probably been worse blunders. But let's get into this. They're kind of interesting. Stay tuned. Sugar bowl, check. Two full pages of questions, check. Oh, that's interesting. Check this out. Turn it on and it's coming out in like four different streams, which is normally not how it comes out. Maybe that's how they want to converse. <laughs> Spirits, News of the Weird, Episode 6. I just want to jump right into it. I got lots of questions, so I'll get right into it here. We all screw up in our jobs sometimes, but these cases are on a whole other level. 
Back at the beginning of April, they finally managed to move the Ever Given and open up the Suez Canal. In case you weren't following the news at that time, a 200,000 ton cargo ship got stuck sideways in the canal and stopped all ship traffic from going through it. As a result, around 15% of the world trade came grinding to a halt. Initially, it was thought that heavy winds jammed the ship into the canal, but apparently there was also a good deal on good old unprofessionalism. It's not the first time a bit of human error has caused potentially world-changing results. Here are four other cases where someone simply messing up their job changed history as we know it. Was it human error that caused the ever given to block the Suez Canal? Who did the better parking job? The captain of the Ever Given or Austin Powers? Yeah, that looks like the Suez Canal incident. <laughs> he nailed it. <laughs> Should the captain of the Ever Given be removed from duty or given a second chance? Were all of these screw ups preordained? Number one, the Titanic's lookout had no binoculars because the locker keys went missing. More than 1,500 people went down with the ship. Among the more famous mistakes made with the Titanic included much too few lifeboats, separation of passengers by class, which increased casualties, and pretty much everybody from passengers to the captain didn't take proper precautions because, well, it was the unsinkable ship. But there's one blunder that most people might not know, namely Titanic's lookout had no binoculars. Titanic's second officer, David Blair, was for some reason moved off the ship in a hurry to another vessel. It's widely speculated that in his rush, Blair accidentally took with him the key to the locker that held the binoculars. You can imagine how having them might have helped the poor lookout spot the iceberg that spelt the death of hundreds. But because one man didn't pay attention to what he was packing, we now know Titanic as the disaster it is. Did David Blair have the keys for the lockbox? Okay, so you might say, well, you know what? They never answered your question. But I've said it before, I don't necessarily care what the answer is because I'm trying to pick through what they're saying and get information from them, right? So whoever that was just said, I'm now looking up David Blair. That tells us, which I've said before, it verifies. These are not all-knowing beings I'm conversing with. They have a means of getting that research or reaching out, grabbing the information that I'm asking for and giving us these answers. So, I mean, to me, that's that's very interesting, and they confirmed it. And when I asked about the Suez Canal earlier, that person responded saying, I've read it and filtered it. In other words, they went and got the information, and they're coming up with an answer as well. This is interesting stuff. How much better would the lookout have been able to see anyways because it was nighttime? There were much bigger causes of the Titanic sinking, in my opinion. Am I right? Number two, a driver's wrong turn started World War One. 
The year was 1914, and Austro-Hungarian Empire's Archduke and Crown Prince Franz Ferdinand was visiting Sarajevo, Bosnia. Unfortunately for him, the Serbian nationalist Black Hand Gang had planned to assassinate the Archduke. One of the gang's members threw a bomb under the Archduke's car, but he clearly was not an expert pitcher. The bomb bounced away into the crowd, where it exploded and injured a security guard and several bystanders. Later in the day, the courageous, or reckless, Archduke decided to visit the hospital where the injured were being treated, so he instructed his driver to take him and his wife there. The driver was unfamiliar with Sarajevo streets and ended up turning down the wrong road. By the side of the road was a cafe where the now infamous assassin Gavrilo Princip, also a member of the Black Hand Gang, was sitting. He could barely believe his eyes when he saw the Archduke's car roll by right next to him. Princip pulled out his pistol and put several bullets in both the Archduke and his wife, killing them. This started a political domino effect which eventually resulted in World War I and 20 million dead. Okay, so the Archduke Ferdinand. The first thing that comes to my mind is that the driver might have been a spy. Was he? Maybe it was no accident he drove down there to where the assassin waited? How bad were the people of the Black Hand Gang? Are they working for the forces of darkness? The Archduke, was he fearless or reckless? If Gavrilo Princip had known that this was going to start a war and there would be 20 million deaths, would he have still pulled that trigger? Number 3. NASA authorities ignored warnings about the Challenger shuttle. In 1986, television viewers watched as horror unfolded on live TV. The Challenger space shuttle broke apart and burst into a ball of flames, killing all five astronauts and two other crew members. The event has been carved into our shared memories as one of the worst disasters to be broadcast on TV, and to think it all could have been avoided if NASA had listened to one man. Bob Ebling was at the time a NASA engineer. He, together with four other engineers, figured out that the O-ring seals in the shuttle booster's engines would fracture in cold weather. Just the night before the disaster, Ebling and his fellow engineers pleaded with their managers at NASA to delay the launch. NASA did not budge. The launch would happen as scheduled. That night when Ebling got home to his wife, all he could say was, it's going to blow up. Was NASA ever held accountable for launching the Challenger despite the forewarning of the uh, problem with the O-rings? Okay, when a nation of people watches some horrible event like that on TV when it's live, do the spirits in heaven feel Earth's repulsion? Number 4. German officers went home to celebrate Rommel's birthday on D-Day. D-Day might have been a completely different story if the Germans would have had some competent battle-hardened commanders leading them, like the legendary General Erwin Rommel. Lucky for the rest of the world, though, Rommel decided to return to Germany to celebrate his birthday. 
Instead of the now famous date on June 6, the Normandy invasion was supposed to happen the day before, but the weather was lousy and the plans were pushed back. Rommel was aware that the Allies would attack at some point. However, German intelligence told Rommel that the weather would not clear up for several days. Convinced that the Allies wouldn't brave the bad seas, Rommel pulled off the front to give his wife a surprise visit for his birthday. When the word reached him that the Allies had attacked Normandy, he rushed back into action. But by then, it was just too late. If Rommel had stayed at the front, would D-Day have ended differently? Do spirits pick a side when there's a war here on Earth? Do spirits ever bet on the outcome? Did the evil Nazis go to heaven? On a scale of 1 to 10, how much of an ass did Rommel feel like for leaving the front, with 10 being a full-blown ass? Alright, thank you very much Spirits for coming through and answering those questions on the greatest oopsies of history. Do you have a message for me today? Do you have a message for our viewers? If you do, and you have one specifically for a person in mind, please say the name of that person and then leave the message. Alright, thank you very much. Love, peace, joy, and adventure to you spirits. I'm sending out the light. God bless you all.